Have you ever wondered how to prepare healthy food that actually tastes good? Well, stay tuned while Avita Tizano, Brenda Kemp, and yours truly, Nice Collins, show you just how to do it and give you a taste of paradise. My name is Brenda Kemp. And my name is Avita Tizano. Thank you so much for coming to our kitchen today. Today we're going to be making a raw pecan pie. Evita, I know you're from the South. Do you love pecan pie? Brenda, I love pecan pie. My grandmother used to make the greatest pecan pie. But when I became vegetarian or vegan, I couldn't eat it anymore because it was loaded with sugar and eggs. And I just had to come up with a recipe and figure out how to eat pecan pie that was dairy free. Exactly. <laughs> well, let's tell everybody what the ingredients are for our raw pecan pie today. For the raw pecan pie, you will need two cups of raw almonds germinated, 35 pitted dates soaked for one hour, then drained, one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice, one fourth teaspoon of cardamom, one half teaspoon of coriander, one fourth teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of vanilla extract, and two cups of raw pecans germinated. Well, let's get started building our pie. Yes. First, we're going to take in our food processor. We're going to take the almonds. And when they say germinated, that means that they've been soaked overnight. Exactly. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to give these a whirl so they can kind of chop up. Brenda, you have it on me. <laughs> it goes like this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, let me cut off those dates for you. Okay, and we're going to put in 10 dates first. These are five. And that's five more. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're mixing again. Yeah. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to oil our pie pan with a little olive oil so our pie will, will not stick to the plate. And I'll start doing this. And I'll let her do that. And we press in the crust because we're building the crust here. Oh, this smells so good. We gotta be sure and get the edges. People don't realize that they can enjoy all the different desserts and it can be sugar free. It's so easy to still have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> or in this case, pie. Pie. <laughs> and I know this might look a little weird, but you got to try this. You'll really like it. Yeah, different is good. Change is good sometimes. Okay. Making sure we get the sides. Don't want a pie without edges here. How's that? Okay, let's take the rest of this and put this in a bowl so you can use this for your filling. I'm gonna take out the yeah, blade take that the might blade. Help us. Yeah, we're making a mess, <laughs> but it's a good mess. <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, and I'll finish up here for you. We're going to combine the rest of the remaining ingredients, which is our dates. The dates we're using are medjool dates because they are the sweetest. And they're my favorite. Okay. Then we'll add in some salt. 
adding in some lemon juice, cardamom and coriander. Cardamom has such a wonderful aroma. I just love it. Vanilla extract. And we must tell the listeners also to make sure to read the ingredients because a lot of the uh, vanilla extract has alcohol in it. And this is alcohol-free mm. vanilla extract. Okay, got that in place and we're going to mix again. Mmm, I smell cardamom already. No, you gotta do it. a little bit more. <laughs> Let me see if I can get some of this off the side. It's really sticky. Yeah, it's real sticky. But we have to press it in anyway. Yeah. Okay. It's real messy, but it will be wonderful. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's get this out of here. And the best thing to do is to, to, to wet your hands with a little oil first. And let's put it in there. I'll let you do that, and I'm going to dress it with the pecans. It's real sticky. Sticky but good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's really sticky. But it's good. Okay. Let me press it out. Another real simple recipe. I don't know if I would eat this for breakfast. I would. <laughs> I'll put some more oil on my hands. I'm going to let you handle the sticky part. I guess I could help, <laughs> but I'm sticky. <laughs> okay. Now, dress it with the pecans. Just kind of pile them on. I like to put them face up. <laughs> we didn't get enough of it on that end there. Yeah. But they get the idea. Okay. Wonderful. Like this is going to be delicious. Okay. All right. Okay, put one there and one more there. Let's get some on these edges. So we cover it all. Okay. And there you have it, your raw pecan pie. A salad Express. We all know we want to live healthy. We all know we want to eat healthy. But, uh, sorry to apologize, eating healthy is not just about salad. But even though salad is very important, and we should try our best to get it in as much as possible, let's continue to do so. However, a lot of times people don't want salad because maybe it just doesn't taste right, or uh, maybe it doesn't have the right dressing and stuff like that. Or for those who love it, they enjoy it, but they wonder why they're not balancing their blessings. Uh, and they eat salad every day, but why? Why am I still adding on extra blessings? And for those who never tuned in, in our program, we never say you're fat or skinny. Some are just over-blessed, wherever you want to put it, and some are under-blessed. And we just want to learn how to balance those blessings. Well, one of the keys that people are not balancing their blessings, even though they're eating salad every day, every day, every day, every day, is because they are adding unnecessary fats to their salad. And I know you all know what I'm talking about. They get crazy and they go overboard with the dressings and no matter which one it is, the Italians, the ranchers, the Thousand Islands, you just make it up and it's, it's, it's overwhelming. A couple of reasons why. Number one, the dressing, the primary base of that dressing is what? Is oil, okay? No matter how many ways you cut it, oil is 100% fat. All right, let's look at the best oils out there, the grape seeds and the olive oil and the extra virgin and stuff like that. 
That is just 100% fact. So the more you start adding on, the more blessings you add. And some people, when they find out extra virgin olive oil is like good for you, they go crazy with it. One second, they're like taking a, 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 a piece of, a, or, or first, they're like sprinkling it all over or actually like a thunderstorm on their salads. You know what I mean? Just all kind of olive oil over it. Number two, they'll take a, like a piece of bread and they're like, oh, olive oil is good for me. So they totally like baptize it in the oil. And then sometimes we use that like um, uh, that piece of bread when we go out to eat. You know, we, you know how they put the little uh, tray there or the little plate, and then what do they put? They put the oil there. We use it like a Kleenex, and it's just like <laughs> sipping up everything that's there, and we wonder why we can't balance the breast because we're taking in too much fat. Even though we may not be eating a lot of fatty foods, that oil, even though it's good, and I know we want to look at the French, and we want to look at the Italians and what they're doing with the oil, and they use it a lot, why can't we do that? It's just still too much and it's unnecessary. So what we can do is we can keep it simple. We're gonna learn how to make our own dress and I'll give you a simple one to on the road to go and it's really simple and easy and I want y'all, I hope, I hope y'all are ready for this because today we have a special item lined up for you. Not only that, we're gonna make uh, what I call my uh, uh, not so fruity fruit salad and, uh, and a nice little creamy dressing. We, you know, some people call it tofu mayonnaise. You can call it whatever you want. You can use it as mayonnaise. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And you can use it as a salad dressing. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to that recipe here. Real quick, tofu mayonnaise is 12 ounces of silken tofu, okay, firm one half cup of cashew pieces, one quarter cup of water, one tablespoon of lemon juice, three quarter teaspoon of onion powder, one half teaspoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of dill, and one half teaspoon of salt, okay? Really simple, really easy to make. And if you don't have time for this, I'm gonna show you another recipe. But what you do is you take the super, super, super soft uh, tofu, you drop that into the blender. Okay, really simple and easy there. Then I already mixed up the salt and, uh, and, the, uh, and the seasonings there. You just pour that in there as well. One of the key items is the dill. Oh man, this is what takes it over the top for you. And if you notice, most of those dresses that we buy in the store, the key ingredient after oil is what is known as vinegar. And the last item here is the cashews, okay? So nothing wrong with the fats, right? Fats is actually good for you, but the problem is sometimes we use too much of it, as we just explained there with uh, some of those dressings. So you put all those items up and keep some water around just in case you need it. As a matter of fact, you could even put a little just to help with the blending there. And uh, the thing is, uh, you want to keep it as creamy as possible. And because that tofu is like really soft and stuff, it won't uh, have a problem blending it up. So I'm just going to blend it till it's nice and creamy, and then we'll take a look at it. And if you see some of those spices are trying to get away from getting blended, so I'm just going to go ahead, stick my spoon in there, because everybody needs to be included here. And, and there we go. And we'll put that back on one more time. And you also want to blend it till you don't hear that crackly sound anymore, because that's the cashews, right? So that's breaking down the cashews and stuff like that. When you hear the crackly sound, that means it hasn't been uh, blended properly. So here we go. Done. Voila, we are finished with our tofu mayonnaise slash dressing slash dip slash uh, something. You just whatever. It's it's actually fantastic. So you have it right there. You have the dressing, and it's very 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 easy. I'll just grab a spatula or even a little uh, uh, knife here, and look how nice and creamy that is. Oh man, especially after you put it in the fridge. When you put it in the fridge, it'll get a little, a little thick, not too much. It gets nice and thick there. And so now we have 
our tofu mayonnaise slash dressing slash dip slash sauce, you name it. Now here's the good thing about it. The cashews are actually loaded with magnesium, okay? Magnesium is good to relax the muscles and the arteries and stuff, so you can enjoy this, so it's good for that. Um, what else do we have in here? We have the tofu. Tofu is fantastic. It provides phytoestrogens. Now, let me explain that real quick. I said phytoestrogens. That means plant-based. These do not, I repeat, they do not work like the estrogens that we are typically known to be aware of, you know, in, 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 the, in, in, in the humans, okay? So here's the, here's the thing, because everybody said, oh, the estrogen, you got to watch out for this and that and stuff like that. So watch this. If you have a concern with the tofu and stuff, pull it out. When in doubt, leave it out. Or I like to say, drop it out. So you don't have to use that. You could just use a little more cashew, same recipe, you know, so it's up to you. You could even try. Make up some new items. May, maybe take some rice, I don't know, uh, uh, cooked rice and probably blend it. That's something new. Actually, I'm going to make a note of that. Or even like probably even potatoes or something. And you can do the probably the same recipe and see how that goes. Let me know, right? Do something. And uh, you have that right there. So here's the good news. So you have the good, good type of fats that, that are helpful. You have something that actually tastes good that you can put on your salad. So enjoy your salad, and as a result, it's very simple and easy to make, so you can actually save some money here um, as well. But the most important thing, we're not looking here just to save money. We're looking to save our lives. And so what kind of salad, a matter of fact, even before I get to the salad, I'll show you real quick how to use this as a mayonnaise. So uh, take a quick look. I'll take this because I have one of our little burgers that we made here. I'm so sorry. I have a little burger here, and what I'm going to do... I'm gonna take some of this mayonnaise and put it on. Anybody likes burgers? If you know a good burger, it has to have some mayonnaise on it, right? So I have my mayonnaise, and I'm gonna go a little heavy. Most times we put on the mayonnaise, we're very, we put it on sparingly because we know that thing is just like eggs and oil and more oil. But now you can go a little extra heavy if you want, but of course it's moderation and temperance but I want mine to have some good flavor. Then I'll take this, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna have a fruit burger. Uh, instead of just like typical veggies, your lettuce and stuff, mix it up, throw on some, uh, what do we have here? Cucumbers and items of that nature. You could even take some guacamole. And if you don't mind, I love myself some ketchup on my burger. So if you tuned in, one of our shows, we show you how to make some ketchup. So I'm gonna put some ketchup on that as well. For all the burger lovers, y'all know what's happening here. This is, a real, this is a real burger, so you mix that in there, and then you put that on top. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut. I'm sorry, I'm spending so much time on this burger because I love them. And uh, I'm going to hurry up and finish. And then we have our nice burger with our mayonnaise and enjoy that dear. So you can use the tofu mayonnaise there for, for the burger. Um, you could also use it for a salad, okay? And I'm talking about the fruit salad and or the not so fruity fruit salad. And we're gonna show you how to do that and we're gonna explain it just a little bit. Now bear with us, when you see it, you may, may uh, is that a fruit salad or a veggie salad? But I'll explain here shortly and just go ahead and grab these items and we're gonna look at the not so fruity fruit salad. And you, all you need is one avocado cut into cubes, one red bell pepper chopped, one orange bell pepper chopped, one cherry tomato or a cup of cherry tomatoes, and you have one half cucumber cubed, okay? Now, it's real simple. I think most of you have those ingredients at home. If you don't, don't stop. You don't need to run to the store. Use what you have, all right? If you only have red bell peppers, great. Just do that. I like to add a little color to my food and items of that nature. So what we have, this is our fruit salad. Now, many people are thinking, how in the world is this considered a fruit salad? Well, it's real simple. The Bible said if it has a seed, well, uh, fruit is something that bears a seed. So let's look at this. So the red bell peppers, red bell peppers, uh, one of the highest sources of vitamin C, almost four times the amount of uh, uh, vitamin C than an orange. This right here is loaded. Fantastic. Enjoy it. I know it costs more money than the green one. 
but it's worth every penny. The green one is per se unripe. It's not ready. It's not ready for you. This one, if you leave it on the vine just a little bit longer, if it's green, it will turn what? Red. And most people are like, whatever, I don't believe it. Like myself, because I grew up in New York and I never saw like farms and stuff, but I found one in the store. Now take a quick, close look at this. This one looked like it's about to go, but that's all right. You, have you noticed, you see the different colors there? That, it used to be green, okay? Used to. But because it took a little time, then it started to mature or ripen, and so now you get, it was turning from green, yellow, whatever, and then it ended up at what? At red. So if you didn't believe me before, now you believe, because I caught one in the middle. So this one should have been hanging out on the, uh, on the tree or the vine a little bit longer, but no problem. This was good for like uh, demonstration purposes. Also, if you notice what we put in there, another fruit. Yeah, like, what, fruits? Because it has a what? It has a seed. It's the avocado. Everybody knows avocado. Some call it aguacate. In Texas, they call it. They don't even call it avocado. They call it guacamole because all we know how to do is just eat it up. And um, uh, this here is fantastic. Now, a lot of people are afraid of the avocado. Do you know why? They're afraid not only because of the price which is uh, something to be afraid of these days, but they're also afraid because they think that it actually, they think that it has cholesterol. Now, there's a real quick rule of thumb, and I know some people even told them that, hey, this thing has cholesterol, so stay away from it and don't use it, and I, I, I've heard it, I've heard it all. Well, let's understand cholesterol real quick, and we'll have the experts come on and explain that real quick, but in regards to food, cholesterol is normally manufactured in the liver. Okay, so if something has a liver, comes from something that has a liver, maybe it's related to something that has a liver. If it even has a face or a mama or is a mushroom or something of that nature, then it will always have cholesterol. So let me ask you a quick question. Does this have a liver? Not quite. Does it have a face? Well, I guess you could draw it in or something like that, but it doesn't. It doesn't have any of those. So this in general, and you can look at the science, it has how much cholesterol? Absolutely no cholesterol. But what it does have, it has a lot of fat actually good fat. One person said that you could probably live off of avocado and bread for the rest of your life because it has so much fat, vitamins and minerals, which is actually uh, good for you. And it also works for the populations. Um, they also said that there are two cities in the world that kind of use the most avocado and you could tell that it works and they're the most populated cities. And I'm talking about Mexico City and Tokyo and they love avocado and you see the result. They're being fruitful, fruitful and multiplying. So. Enjoy the avocado. What it actually does for you, it actually lowers your cholesterol. Now, let's think about this for a second. How could something, if the, what people say, that's why I can't live by he said, she said. Do y'all know the he said, she said? Just look to your right or to your left. The people next to you, those are he said, she said. They'll say something, but they per se haven't studied it unless they did study it. And they say, oh, it has this, has that. But how could something that has cholesterol, has cholesterol, because we know it doesn't, how could it lower your cholesterol? doesn't make sense because it doesn't have any cholesterol. So enjoy it, but the only catch is we need to be moderate, okay, and temperance. Now, they have these little ones that we just use here today, the Haas avocado. I call them hmm avocados. You know why I call them hmm avocado? Because you just think about it and you already finished eating it. So if somebody tells me, oh, I ate one hmm avocado, a.k.a. Haas avocado. I say, oh man, no problem. They say, is that too much? Is it too much? Well, man, enjoy it, especially if you're eating twice a day and you're exercising and stuff like that. But in the islands, in the Caribbean, and in maybe in South Florida, and, and maybe in Mexico and South America, and the, you know, the, the nice climate places, they have these big ones. Some of them are so big, they're like the size of your head. And if somebody tells me, man, I ate one of those today, I say, uh-oh, too much, too much, too much, too much fat and then you're gonna find yourself adding on extra blessings. So, no, no, we don't wanna do that. We only wanna have maybe like a serving or two. I have a quick little tip for serving sizes. A handful is the serving, okay? So, this more or less a serving, yeah? And so, the children, should they eat the same thing? Well, not quite, because their handful is what? Smaller, so they get a smaller piece. Now, if you have big dad, like my dad, is like six something and, and all this stuff, and he has a handful, his handful will, will obviously be what? More than mine. So, that's, it's just something that you could try to use in the future. Anytime you think of servants, just think of what? A handful. So that's the avocado, enough of that. But it's also good for anemia. This thing is amazing. You know how it also lowers the cholesterol? Because it has a soluble fiber. And so that helps to prevent the situation there with the placking of the artery. So this is amazing. It also works as a natural diuretic. So a person who has like uh, severe swelling of, of, of the lower extremities, edema, 
They can also have a little peace, but also follow your doctor's instructions. Keep off of that excess salt. And by God's grace, a little exercise, just make sure you let your physician know what you're doing and you can get rid of that problem. I remember one lady, she says, man, I started using this. I started using artichoke. I started eating some of the not so fruity fruit salad. And by God's grace, because she has severe swelling in her lower extremities for quite some time. And you ready for this? In like less than a week, week and a half time, the swelling slowly but surely started to go away. And she was so excited, and she called us back for more information and stuff. And I said, well, all the information is in your local supermarket. The fruits, the veggies, the nuts, the grains, all of these are excellent for you. So back to the salad now. We're going to enjoy our salad. So what do we have here? We have the, the cherry tomatoes. We have the cucumbers. We have the red bell peppers, the orange ones, you name it. We have it here. Why do we call it fruits? Because what does the Bible say? If it bears a seed, then it's a fruit. So in general, these are all what? Fruits. And I know there's a big thing. Don't mix fruits and veggies and everybody's crying over it and stuff. I mean, I mean there, there is some, there's some, some points to it. And what it actually does say is it said it's not preferable, okay? To try, so try your best to keep them separate. If you can't, you go by somebody's house and they have the big salad and there's tomatoes and, 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 and cucumbers and, and greens and all that stuff. Are you going to say, uh-oh, sorry, can't have your salad because it has fruits and veggies? No, no, be nice. Show some love and stuff like that. And, you know, enjoy. But to each his own. The program is a great bit of seed. Take the information you find helpful. If you don't agree with something, no problem spit out the seed. But before you spit out that seed, make sure you study it because you may be spitting out something that will save our lives. So we have our little fruit salad here. Fruits normally in general work for like cleansing out the system and then you have your veggies. So I usually do the fruits for breakfast and then the veggies for lunch. So the fruits, they, they help with the cleansing of the system. And then you have the veggies which help with the revitalizing or the replenishing of the system. So you can mix and match however you want. Enjoy it, but I'm going to mix and match, all right? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour my avocado. And if anybody still thinks that avocado has cholesterol, no problem. No problem. Just go ahead and don't eat the avocado in your house. I'll give you our address and just mail the avocados. But overnight, please, because I don't want them to go bad, because avocado is so expensive these days. I could use a couple of donations of avocados. So what we will do, we'll mix that there together. And hope get your bowls ready because we almost done and we are going to eat this thing. You just look how pretty and beautiful it is. You know, the first step in digestion, not only is the smell, but it has to look good. And so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to pour this back into this bowl. Or matter of fact, I'm just going to put that on the side of my, my uh, sandwich there. Oh, look at that. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And then I'm going to put some of my dressing on that. So go ahead. And you all enjoy it. Yes, I went a little heavy, but give it a try. Let me know how it tastes. And you can have your not so fruity fruit salad. Have you ever